based on what we show here, we say, oh my God, based on this analysis, share should be worth $41, but it's rolling at 12. Everybody, today I'm going to be doing a DCF from scratch based on the guidance that management has given. And it's going to be largely driven on one single line item, which is the adjusted free cash flows. I am not going to be doing this based on net income and trying to get it to a cash flow because management already gave us their cash flow projection and how they expect the company to grow in terms of revenues. So if you like what you're hearing, then definitely hit the subscribe button and let's get straight into it. All right, so what's key to stress in this analysis is there are many assumptions and the assumptions change everything. What I used for my assumption is the adjusted free cash flow that management gave for its operations going forward in 2021. Now, when you marry the adjusted free cash flows to the projected revenue growth that management has forecasted or budgeted, which is 30% till 2025, I assumed that the adjusted free cash flow will follow that pattern of growth. And this is a key assumption that's being made because we are not aware of any major cash deployment initiatives. We are not aware of any major uh, upfront cash that's being received or cash that's being invested into a customer. The fact that Palantir is shifting towards quick deployments at customer locations, quick implementations, and offering a SaaS model, I am assuming that the days of sales are standing, so the, the, the amount of time it takes to collect, the amount of time that it takes to pay suppliers, will say consistent in the business. So given all of that, the cash flow is expected to grow in line with the revenue growth. So that's the key assumption. I did not even bother to try to build a net income and then try to carve out uh, amortization or carve out uh, uh, different uh, elements of the net income line item on the financial statements to get to a cash flow. I am just using the cash flow target that management has given and has already disclosed publicly. Now, having said that, do keep in mind the adjusted free cash flow doesn't include payroll taxes for stock options. So the number is really just reflective of operations. And I'm assuming that this number will best reflect how the company should be valued in the future and valued when being uh, evaluated for an M&A deal going forward. What are these assumptions that are being used? The tax rate is straight from NYU Stern School of Business, from Aswad Damodaran, who's a valuation expert. I'm using the rates that he uses. So this is right from his website, uh, tax rates by sector, NYU. The rate here is the cash tax rate, the average across only money-making companies. Now, if we go here, software, system, and application, we got our 18.81%. So that's what's used here. Check. Discount rate, that is based on a variety of key elements. Uh, if you do do your discount rates and you calculate it, it's easier to do for public companies. I base this based on the information we have about Palantir. Zero debt, the equity is worth 33 million. The tax rate is 19%. That was straight from Aswad Damodaran's page. The risk-free rate return is the 10-year uh, yield that we will that we would get if we bought a U.S. bond. So 2.13 is the minimum anyone would expect because it's guaranteed by the government. The beta is 1.61. That's from Macro Axis. The market return is 9.2%, and this is the Standard and Poor metric that they've monitored which happens over 10 years. So every 10 year period had an average return of 9.2% over 140 years. So this is the rate that I'm using. The total capital the company has is 
essentially uh, the debt and equity together, 33.4 million. Uh, cost of debt, zero. There's no debt weightage of equity. So that's just a calculation here. It's one. The cost of equity is basically what we have here. And the discount rate is 14%. Now, let's say you said, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The investment in Palantir cannot be 9%. I need it to be much higher. It takes much more for me to invest in Palantir. Then that is something that can change the outcome of this analysis. But based on what I've been seeing uh, online with, uh, through a lot of DCS, people are using this, that, and the other, and I'm using something that I'm comfortable in. I think 9% is a good return and it could track the market returns that have been happening for the last 140 years. Potential to blow past that is so huge that I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to invest in Palantir just for a 9% uh, return. Now, that's how we got to 14%. The average growth rate, that's 45%. The average growth rate in revenue. So that's over 11 year period. I'm expecting revenues to grow at 45% on average. This tracks with what management said, 30% through 2025. But I think they're sandbagging that number. And I think in the next five years, when the modules get picked out out of these operating systems and sold individually to commercialize the sales are going to grow at a much faster pace and i think that 45 percent over 11 year period on average is reasonable and that's a big assumption the exit multiple i gave it a 17.5 the exit multiple based on aswa domodaran's page is about 17.5 uh based on the average firm uh where it is a 17.5 so this is based on ebitda uh but I, I i assume that the ebitda at this point for palantir will track very closely to how cash flows are moving so in this case there's no big accounting fugazi that's happening and i think 17.5 is a reasonable way to value the company when it's going to be sold because it is a high highly valuable company with huge barriers to entry where it has great relationships with government and a very sticky business model with commercial businesses so for that i give it a 17.5 the share price today is 13.2 cash on hand is straight from the financial statements 2.3 billion and the sh total shares outstanding is 2.5 billion you might be wondering what the hell jet this is it's 1.9 where you're getting 2.5 well 2.5 is assuming that all the stock options are exercised and not forfeited all the restricted stock units are exercised and not forfeited and the all those stock appreciation rights are exercised and not forfeited so this is 2.5 billion this is all based on the financial statements of palantir as of the 30th of september this is how i got to it all this all the different types of data from here 2.5 you could do it yourself this is all from the financial statements now here we will see that based on 2.5 billion shares outstanding is how i'm driving my analysis to get to the final share price so the growth is 30 35 40 40 45 50 right after modules 55 at this point alex's goal of growing the company 10 times is hit now 20 uh and then 20 and then 45 by the end now what we need to see here is the net present value so the total value of all of these cash flows is a hundred million dollars now how did we get here well it's based on the growth rate of revenues it's a key assumption. The discount rate of 14%, tax rate of 19%. Key thing to stress, there are no taxes for the first few years as the company is generating revenues because I've seen on their financials, they've already lost $5 billion in accumulated deficits. So I assume there's a lot of tax carry forwards that can be used. So only after this mark will they start to pay taxes based on 19%. So $100, million, $100 billion value of all these cash flows divided by the total shares outstanding. So this is the main thing to look at. So $100 billion plus cash, $102 billion, $103 billion value for the equity divided by the shares outstanding, we get to a value of $41. Now $41 is about three times higher than the current share price. So technically, if you buy today, or if you're evaluating to buy today, based on what we show here, 
we say, oh my god, based on this analysis, share should be worth $41, but it's rolling at 12 Instant buy. Let's go. That's the way I would look at it, and that's how I make my decisions. Now, if you're curious about how the moderate case and the bear case looks, then definitely hit the subscribe button because I do not want to make this video way too long. I'm going to keep it short. The next video is coming out soon. So hit the subscribe button and I'll show you the moderate and the bear case, which could change everything. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.